welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vayner Chuck, and this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA the Internet's most passionate wine program, episode 601, Christopher Mott. And I don't like to start with football on the show because sometimes you're watching this wine show for the first time and you're like, why does he talk so much about football? But I would be absolutely remiss not to talk about the fact that the New York Jets did not make the playoffs. Um, and that makes me very sad, obviously, but I've been pretty much in shutdown mode since I was telling Mott, San Francisco, I kind of knew this team was done. Um, and then today we fired our head coach, Eric Mangini. I just want to send a, my best wishes. I kind of, I'm a little bit higher on Eric's coaching skills than maybe some of the irrational Jets fans in the Jet Nation right now. And I have very good feelings that he will be uh, moving on and be successful in the National Football League, Mott. Um, I think that the owner, Cut him, I understand. Listen, nobody wants to lose four of the last five after we were eight and three, top of the world. We're talking Super Bowl, I mean. So, I get it, it's a business, and, uh, but boy, I don't know. I'm a little <clears throat> about the whole thing. Now, one thing I'm not <clears throat> about is Italian red wines, my friends. Um, I think Italian red wines represent some of the more interesting drinks out there. Um, there's so much to be discovered. And we're gonna talk about two uh, great varietals today that I think could be kind of interesting for you. Um, and then we'll top it off with a, a, a super Tuscan, American, or New World, or Bordeaux, depends on how you wanna talk about it. Great varietals in Tuscany. Um, and we'll get to that in a little bit. But let's start right off the bat with this very interesting wine that Ian's all pumped up about. Um, this Colosi uh, Nero di Avila, 2007, from Sicily, 12 US dollars, 90 points Antonio Galani, who is the uh, uh, the wine critic for Robert Parker's wine advocate now. He is the Italian wine critic. He's a pretty tough critic and, and a good one, um, in my opinion. Um, so a 90 pointer for 12 bones is very interesting. Nero di Avila um, is a very intriguing grape. It's from the Sicily region. It's starting to get more exposure throughout Italy. Um, it's a very interesting grape because it's very big and new world, a lot of fruit, very American palate, they say, but often compared to Syrah. So if you like the big fruit, robust wines, to me, so many Neros out there are so much more talented and interesting and exciting to their counterparts from Australia and California in the Syrah price range, and they're very well priced. 12 bones, 90 points Kalani. Uh, I'm very, 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 very interested in uh, in tasting this wine. So let's give it a sniffy sniff. Like this. Now the first thing that comes across to me is almost like this great creamy woody kind of thing going on. So almost like a creamsicle on an ice pop stick. So you get a little bark, a little wood, but you're also getting a little creaminess of vanilla action. I am getting some floral components. Um, let's go with lilac on the nose, which is quite aromatically interesting. Maybe if the old school sniff, sniff, oh, scratch and sniff stickers. You know, you get like a flower lilac. You smell, so it's not exactly lilac. It's more like artificial sticker version. I kind of like it over here. Uh, like art, no, don't move, Mott. Go back. I want to be off camera. All right, I'll come back. I'm in a weird mood, Mott. Eight and three, fired coach, turmoil. Parcells, the big tuna might want to come back. I hate you Dolphins and Patriots. That's the only thing that, deep down, I was kind of like, well, at least we knocked out the Patriots out of the playoffs. We didn't help them last night. Um, by the way, quick prediction, all four wild card teams win on the road. That's my big prediction, Mott. All four road wild card teams are live and they all win, all of them. Um, so, great floral components. I get a little bit of like earthiness. I also get a very interesting, there it is again, almost like um, artichoke. A little bit of artichoke action, artichoke heart coming through on the nose, which I, th I think is very intriguing, very interesting. And this has a very good, interesting, fun, red wine nose for me and I'm, I'm happy about that. Let's give it a whirl. Here, grab a glass. Let's get wild. You're excited about this um, Nero. Yep. I just tasted it. I like it. I dig it. You had it? Yeah, twice. Drank it at home. Loved it. Vaniacs, this is Ian Doran. 
Wine Library's wine director. This is the man. If you ever come in the store and I'm not here, this is the guy you want to look for. He's got the goods. Uh, I'm a fan of Ian's. He's been on the Thunder Show before a couple times. Ma, how many times? Twice? Yeah, the, yeah three times, actually. Three and times? I, I, the Kramer episode, I sat on the in the background. And then I've been behind the camera several times. Very that nice. Bordeaux trip. Tell us... Um, yes, that's true. The Bordeaux trip. Um, tell us what you liked about this wine. How did this go down? You saw the rating. You asked to get a sample. Or you just nope. bought it on rating. Bought it on rating. Yep, which 12, is something. $12, true. 90 something points. Something we do as retailers. You know, took it home. Mm -hmm. I, actually, somebody pointed this out to me. A friend of mine pointed it out to me. Mm -hmm. uh, he was very adamant about the wine. He had had the 06, mm -hmm. and I said, you know, to the wholesaler, what do you have? They have 07. Check the rating, also 90 points. Just came in, grabbed the bottle, brought it home, loved it. It's more finesse. It's like a Pinot Noir fan would love this because it's a little spicy. You think so? But it's elegant. It's got that, like, almost like... I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I can kind of see that. I mean, there's a lot of floral action. So mm -hmm. I can see, and it's gamey. Mm -hmm. So I can see the Pinot play from your standpoint there. Obviously, it's much brighter, though, mm -hmm. than, than a Pinot. And, you know, it kind of is like a Syrah Pinot. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. like an imaginary blend of Syrah yeah. and Pinot. But if you, I think it's if you bright. wanted to transition people from New World wines to Old World wines, I think this is a nice segue. Southern Italian wines, I find a lot of time, have that big fruit. But they always got that, those fun flavors that you're looking for, too. I like the high acid in here as well. What's up, Sashuk? Yes, I'm taping. I got somebody from our hometown. Babrusk? Yeah, Babrusk. Now the episode's really going to get How are you? Excuse me one second, folks. Keep him, keep him entertained. Yeah. I guess I, I guess he, it was good that he called me in here. I'm not... <laughs> no. Um, Southern Italian wines, especially varietals like Alianico and Nero Diabola, they kind of... Um, Always have good fruit composition, but plenty of that Just earthiness. So if you want to show people uh, earthy qualities, I think Southern Italy is a good play. To me, this is really interesting. It's spicy. It's got good fruit. It's got like lilac, floral components, good brightness, uh, black pepper. Solid tannins. Really solid tannins, I think. I mean, <laughs> I'm really blown away by this wine. A lot of time, Again, this is where Galoni really, I think, hits the, uh, you know... Can we get more of this stuff? <laughs> oh I'm not getting excited. I mean, this is no. This is a this is a retailer's sommelier. If you're a sommelier, I know we get a lot of wine buyers watching this show, guys. Vias Imports. Well, zoom it in. Let's give them a plug so they can figure out where to buy this because we want to share the knowledge. This is a really intriguing play for a twelve dollar wine. We do. I mean. This is a very popular style to me. This really hits mm -hmm. a lot of palettes. I think mm -hmm. a lot of people could like this. Old and new palettes. I know? agree. I mean, this is a double bubble, um, you know, and I just think, you know, just like, uh, you know, we're both, like, you know, we get along because we're both sad. You're a Bengals fan. You yes. Have, you should be very upset. I'm Good, very strong up finish, though. Strong finish. 4-3-1 and one in the last eight, so. Oh, is that right? Yeah, 4-3-1 in the Do last eight. Do you think eight. it saves his job? Oh, I know it did. It saves his job. Oh, I guarantee it. Marv will have a job. Wow, and I know that there are gonna be some and folks out there that disagree with me, but Marv's gonna Marv's gonna have his job. I just think this is a phenomenal bottle of wine, well worth the price. I'm gonna go right in. The, what would you score this range? I or would go wine, 88, 89. I mean, I'm a little bit more conservative, especially on a twelve dollar wine. I mean, I think ninety points kind of you move into that greatness factor. Sure, you know, 88, 89 points for me is very respectable for a twelve dollar right. wine, and I especially think that there's a value play in this. Sure. More importantly, I think this has a twenty to twenty five dollar value range. I uh, I disagree. I think from uh, on my palate, this is a ninety point wine. I think this is an absolutely sensational bottle of wine, and just because it's twelve bucks, I don't want to disregard it. You know what of I mean? Of course, which of is course. something I do at times. Plus, I'm probably a little bit luckier. I get to taste a lot of the really eighty point wines. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, anyway, this is very good wine, <coughs> very good food wine because of the back end tannins, mm -hmm. and I, I think an exceptionally well made wine, and definitely for all the people that are watching. So many people want to explore, try new wines. Many of you have never had a Nero. Many of you have never had a wine from Sicily. Mm. And I, I just think this is a crushing everyday Wednesday night pizza, food, pasta. You never feel bad about oh, what yeah. you shelled out for it price-wise. Solid bottle of wine. That, there's a Saturday night possibility yeah. in that too. No, and I agree with you. The other thing I like... Would well, be, I relegate it to the weekday. I agree with you. It's that good. There's a, there's a two to three year aspect on the age factor on this sure. too that I think if you gave it a couple of years, you'd really start to see some really cool, different, interesting, unique flavors. I think you're right. Wine. Didn't talk about the, uh, fl the fruit either. Blackberry, big time. Big, big blackberries. A little sour cherry. No, actually not even. I'll just go cherry. Just really nice. I like it. Good wine. Thanks for telling me to do it. Yeah, no problem. Okay. You Thank want you. to stick around or you're going to go? Awesome. I can stick around. All right. It's up to you. Cool. We can taste wine together.
I haven't done this in a while. It's been, yeah, why not? The holiday season kind of uh, lags on you a little bit. Yeah, no doubt. So, up and go. Um, all right, let's see what's going on here. We've got the La Spinetta, which is a very, very famous, more of a Piedmont producer. Oh, definitely. You Piedmont. know, big Barolo producer. Um, but this is a little play for them in uh, in Tuscany. This is uh, the Il Nero di Casanova, 2006, 95 percent Sangiovese, five percent Colorino, and uh, 15 U.S. bones, 2006 vintage. E. Uh, you buy the Italian wines in, mm -hmm. at wine library. So, mm -hmm. what uh, what made you get on this radar? Did, did the salesperson uh, twist your arm? No, no. Giorgio okay. Rivetti. Uh, right. You know the you gentleman behind La Spinetta. Right. You know he, his his Barbarescos and Barolos have such impeccable quality to them, and Barbaros as well. You know uh, he does just a really good job across the board. Tasted this. Now I haven't had this in a while. Mm -hmm. I bought this back in the springtime. It right. was kind of fresh. It was kind of 06. dark. You know, it was, you know, 06 was like the big buzz at the time. Sure. 06s are coming out. They're going to be really, really good for Tuscany. Right. Um, you know, was that I, a big play for you? That oh, was, absolutely. Early oh, on, no. absolutely. Everybody absolutely. wanted 06 Tuscany. Something and the, the 05 of this had a 90 from Wine Spectator, so right. I thought it was just kind of like... Legacy. You know, might get a 91 this vintage. Sure. Maybe I'll get lucky. And you can tell from Ian's standpoint, I think this is a really interesting look into the world, guys. Press has a big factor in our world. I mean, you know... Consumers look for it online, in the store. We do a lot of hand selling. We have a lot of wine staff, but there's lots of people walking through the store, and people just really are curious and are interested in the press. Um, so you can see Ian now twice bringing up press. I mean, it's it's part of our conversation. Of course, we're always looking for stuff that we're pumped about and we recommend, and we do lots and lots of that. Mm -hmm. But we'd be remiss not to mention, or for me to you know bring this up to you guys, wondering if you're saying, oh, why is Ian such a score whore or anything like that? <laughs> A little bit of a school work. but you know, <laughs> you know, no. But at the end of the day, it's a, it's a part of our life. I mean, yeah. we need to be educated on it, and it's something we look at. Um, what do you? So let's get into this wine. First and foremost, very bright nose. I, I get a, I get a. You know what really comes jumps out at me? Uh, I get a really heavy um, roasted tomato kind of thing. Yeah. In nose, no, I'm getting like cranberry and almost like yeah, cra good call. Like like almost, heavy cranberry. I, like it sounds bad. It's almost like a flowery kind of Kool-Aid kind of. I'm getting kind of like that little bit of a sugary sweet I can kind smell of the tomato though. You get this you get right? Yeah. I get the tomato I mean the tomato and the uh and the uh I think the cranberry is a tremendous call. I get like that ocean spray cranberry cocktail. Mm. It's not co it's not juice. Mm, mm, mm. Ma, it's cranberry cocktail. Just saying, I get emotional about a cranberry cocktail. All right. No, but it, it, it cocktail's away. a good word too because it has that sugary mm -hmm. fruit aspect on the nose. Heavy tannins. Mm -hmm. Now, Colorino. Heavy in the Tuscany, heavy powdery, in the Umbria. Powdery tannins. Very, very substantial tannic wine. Um, you'll rarely see it by itself. Have you ever seen a 100% Colorino? I don't think so. I don't think I've seen many in my life either, if ever. It is an absolute teammate behind the scenes. You know how, like, there's always, like, behind, with greatness, there's always somebody much smarter and awesome mm. behind the scenes. Like, for me, Ma! Ma's behind <laughs> and, and Matt and Lizzie. They're behind the scenes. I get all the glory, get to be on Today's Show and all that bajazz, but the reality is these much smarter, cooler people are behind the scenes. That's what kind of Colorino it is for Sanjo. A lot of times, yeah. A lot of times. It's the backbone, it's the tannins, it's the structure. The the Sanjo's the pizzazz and the fruit, but this is really the tannic backbone, the infrastructure. Nobody looks at a house and gives a rat's ass about the foundation concrete, but you have to. Sorry. But you have to. And that's what's going on with Colorino. It doesn't get enough respect, Ian. I'm with you. Right? It, it, Malbec is the same way for me. Yeah. Malbec but Malbec is, has had its time now. Yeah. But as a single varietal, I, I still struggle with Malbec sometimes. I think the French do it really well. I think there's some good Argentina wines. But there's a simplicity about the varietal. And I think that's one of the drawbacks of It's a very controversial Colorado. statement. Of course it is, because I know that people out there love Malbec. And well, I, the, I'm, I'm a believer the, that Malbec the is The climate strong of Argentina, Argentina emphasizes the good fruit that, are, that it can bring out. But the high elevation, they've got some interesting terroir. I mean, they, they get up there. No, I know. Axel Valferrar, you yep. know, I mean, you know, way, way, way back in the early days, you know, Santiago this was on the show. a lot. Yes, he was. Yeah. Uh, you know what, Mott? Link that up. When we had Santiago from uh, Axel Valferrar, I mean, he's just such a legend. I think we're like exit 30. I'll find it for you. No, it was like 13, I want to say. It's early. It's real early. Maybe you're actually going to get a Time Machine episode <laughs> linked up by Mott right now. Early episode, one of the great men in the wine industry, period. One of the legends from Passionate Argentina. Guys, yeah. I do not like this wine. 
I'm gonna go with you on that. I'm actually getting a little bit of oxidation actually in the fruit. Uh, in the mid palate, actually, that I was kind of like putting me off my first taste. Really, I, I had a little bit of almost like it was tiring, almost like too quickly. I agree with you that's tiring. I can kind of see where you're going to oxidation. I actually think that is a byproduct of, believe it or not, of the tannins and the grape varietals how they're acting, and especially in the mid palate. Or maybe not. I don't know. I, no. I can kind of see you're where getting you're getting like, almost that like not older... really getting. I'll tell you what I'm getting. No. Off balanced. Yeah. It's definitely too young. There's a you know I mean it's a little young. But it's off balanced. It's really yeah. off balanced. The tannins are really sharp and bitter. Yeah. The fruit is fakeish. Yes. Right. Very much. So yes. it's like fake fruit plus bad tannins. It's like you know, like a bad hair piece, and the guy picks his nose at your date. You're like, <laughs> I don't want this guy in my life. That's kind of how yeah. I see this wine. Yeah. It, it was. It's interesting too because I had this back when it was released, and the fruit was much inkier. It was more like blueberry, cassis, blackberry, and now the fruit's like just a red streak. I don't know, Mott. I don't know, but I feel like Ian's just trying to save his ass here a little bit, right, Matt? Gonna... Listen, at the end of the day, I think this is a pretty awkward wine. I think there's some people that could like it, believe it or not, given the fact that there's a lot of people out there, you know, like Uncle Isaac, who always says, I want my wine dry. Mm -hmm. This is very dry, and that is appealing to a lot of people. And you rarely get good wine, though I don't love this. At least it's good, it's not garbage. Mm -hmm. That is really dry. I'm getting a very sugary aspect, like towards the end of the mid. It's just a weird wine. It's just kind of like fake fruit, bad tannins, but dry. And I think there are some people that would like it on the dry play. To me, this is a very boring effort. I I'm going to score this wine 81 points. I probably went in the 70s, but I wanted to give it an 81 because I want to give it my rookie tight end Dustin Keller a shout out for a very solid season this year. Yeah. Um, but I'm not feeling this wine. I'm with you. I, I don't. It you don't like it? No. Nope. Second time around. That's what happens sometimes to us. I hate when that happens. Hey, I'm, I'm still one for two, though. I'm, I loved. Yeah. But really, your friend is one for one. Who yeah. Turned, who, who was it that turned <laughs> Rob, Ke Bob Kenny. Robert Bob Kenny. Kenny. Yeah. He's uh, a good guy, young guy, like myself and you, and uh, really passionate about wine, really into wine, and uh, a good What's conversationalist. He, uh, he actually sells furniture. Intriguing. Yeah. But he's, uh, he's a big wine guy. We should so. get him to sell wine. Maybe he can go two for two. Uh, okay. Gaia, 2006 Promise. Uh, this is a blend of 55 Merlot, 35 Syrah, right? Yep. And what? Uh, 10 Sanjo. And 10 Sanjo. 90 point spectator, 40 <coughs> bones, Gaia mm -hmm. from Tuscany. Um, and this is a wine through the years that's given me a lot of pleasure. Uh, one of the first vintages, I think 97 that I bought of it. You know, big score, and we're selling for like twenty nine ninety nine. It was a big, big item yeah. for me. It was, it was Gaia. Gaia, yeah. And it's twenty nine ninety nine. Yeah, it was a Gaia. big, big thing. I mean, yeah. It was a big thing. So you know, international grape varietals here in Tuscany. A lot of Merlot, a lot of Syrah, only ten percent Sanjo. Mm -hmm. So new world play on that level. Uh, let's give it a sniffy sniff. Mm -hmm. E. Interesting. Somebody, somebody killed an animal. Yeah, <laughs> kind of stinky. Somebody killed a few animals, I think. Interesting, right? Yeah. Not what I expected. Not at all. I mean, I, I, I smelled it while you were showing the bottle, you? and I, I snuck in. But uh, I smell a little graphite, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it smells like a, a burnt tennis racket. Yeah. It smells it's like, like something burnt, that's for sure. Actually, you know what it really <laughs> smells like? <laughs> if you re Listen, the Thunder Show is all about calling a spade a spade. There's a little bit of, like, you did a poop, and you lit some matches in the bathroom, <laughs> but you came, like, ten minutes later... Like after somebody did that, and you're like, yeah. oh, matches and, and there was food. potpourri already yeah, there. Yeah, and potpourri a little, because there is a little, kind of interesting. It's got a little of that. I do get there's a little herbal quality. There's herbaceous action. There's a lot of herbaceous action, actually. I do get yeah. like a, a chamomile teal, tea kind of component on the nose. And finally, it's rounded out by raspberries. I think raspberries. Yeah, the I'm fruit getting it that, now. Yeah, that's getting really cool. And there's like a minty, I don't know, I'm getting like a minty, like some kind of like green. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's the, not that's mint. a tea. Maybe that's the tea for you. Yeah, the tea. picking up, yeah. you know? I don't know. Everybody's got their own. Let's give it a whirl. Take the floor, Ian. I don't know if it's the Las Panetta screwing with me, but the palate and the nose do not match up on this wine at all. Nope. They don't. I'm getting a lot of sugary, sweet fruits. Just kind of simple, almost like... Almost jellied fruits, not a lot of... Don't do anything. Let me hold your hands. Ma, zoom in on Ian's <laughs> wine unibrow. No, the wine unibrow on his eyebrows. This is what we get sometimes. It's a very rare occasion, and I don't want the maniacs to miss out on the wine 
It happens. You put the Thanks. glass in. You want. Yeah. There um, you go. The biggest thing that stands out for me is heat. Yeah. The alcohol is well, really too. rising on me. Yeah. Big time. You, That's like, I didn't get to the finish yet. So. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, I'm not. Listen. No, but it's it's not, I think it's very hot. It's so promising on the nose. You're like, wow, this is not what I expected. You're gonna get some of the funk. You're gonna get some of that Tuscany terroir. And then you taste it, and it's like, hmm. It, t- it reminds me a lot of the Las Veneta without the colorina in it. You know, it doesn't have those edgy tannins, but it's got sugar, sugary it's, sweet it's fruit. It's very boring. Yeah. This is a really disappointing wine, actually. To me, this really shows the example of. My, you still laughing about the wine unibrow? You are, right? A bit. I'm hoping, I think there's a lot of giggles in the Vayner Nation. Um, Ian, you know what? To me, this really tastes like $15 wine. And if it wasn't yeah. Gaia's name on it. I was going to go 10 Really? Yeah. I They're mean, tough. it really uh, it, it really has such simple, simple Spanish wines that Jay Miller goes out and puts his neck on at 90 points and, and, and $11.99. It, no, 90 points. No, I mean, but, they, but they, it's they 86 have, Yeah, they, but they've got that sweet fruit like this and... I don't know. Maybe the nose kind of, kind of, had me going in one direction, and now the palate's got me going in another, and that's why I'm off. I probably don't hate it as much as you do. I'm even real as I just retasted. I'm probably even willing to say this is more like a twenty-two dollar wine. It's got some creaminess. It's got some fruit. The heat bothers me. Mm-hmm. It's a little off balance again. It's a young wine. These are 06 mm-hmm. wines. Let's be honest. If Angelo was sitting here, he would tell us what I want you to drink this in thirteen years. Oh, nine easily. Years. You know what I mean? Easily. So he let's call a spade a spade on that. That being said, I think the fruit is disappointing. Oh, God, yeah. I, I think the fruit, the quality of the fruit, the essence of the vineyard is a little disappointing to me, and it's really kind of lackadaisical boring. I think where Ian makes a great point is go out and buy a Spanish wine. Da, da, da. I, ooh, a little whistle. I agree. This is the kind of situation where there are an enormous amount of wines between 20 and $30 that I think are as good, if not better than this. I feel like I can find this at fifteen dollars, and to spend forty really hurts my feelings. To me, this is adequate red wine. I'd probably score this eighty-seven plus, eighty-eight points even. It's a it's a solid bottle of wine. The heat bothers me. Other than that, I think it kind of does what it does. But uh oh, uh, but at the end of the day, you better check if it's your way. No, no, I bet you it's not. It's too early. <laughs> Sales rep. Got it. Um, but at the end of the day, a very solid effort that lacks in certain areas. And uh, I would score 88. And where would you go on this one? Um, I thought the 87 plus was a fair assessment. I mean, it's my chop on a plus No, wise. but hold on. But I, I liked your original assessment because I like the plus factor. Mm-hmm. There, you know, because this is a $40 wine, because it's Gaia, because gonna Angelo is going to sit here and say, right. well, you're, you're drinking this today. You should be drinking this in 2016. You're give it the benefit of doubt. Absolutely. Of I would definitely give this the benefit Whereas of doubt. Whereas it was more obvious, you think, on the La Spinetta, never well, going to have it, right? $15 wine, $40 wine. Yeah, the but expectations you know I mean, of you know, ageability. But you know what? If you have a brown paper bag, you know what I mean? Just on the basis of this has firm, ripe tannins. This was tannic, but this has tannin foundation that you feel has more age to it. Yeah. Yeah, you know I, I, mean? I, I agree with that. You know I, what I, mean? I definitely I mean, agree with that. Because the tannins are very integrated in this one. What do you think about Eric Mangini? I'm glad he's gone. Yeah? Yeah, I'm glad he's gone. You feel gone. like he didn't have it in him. You know what? I, when you guys were 8-3, mm-hmm. I think everybody on the team got a little cocky. Right. The coach's job, the at, that, the, the coach's job at that point in time is to reel them back in. And it didn't happen. You know, Coughlin, he's had Kind of like when we were selling 05 Futures and I didn't like the way you guys were approaching the vintage and I reeled you guys in. Of course. I understand. Of course. You know. Just bringing it home. You know, wow. Coughlin, he was able to Coughlin, go deal with all the... <laughs> no giant fan on earth liked Coughlin. <laughs> of course not, but he's able to control the team now. I hate football. Question of the day. Oh, oh, well, oh, Ian's a guest. He has to ask the question. Fair enough. I First, I, I will give a happy question. belated uh, birthday to uh, Mauricio Fernandez. And since Ian is a guest, even though he's really family, but yeah, okay, Mott, I mean, Mott, you see Mott's Mott, put, Mott, face? I, I but, like you said, behind you, yeah, yeah. there's got, a great man. Worry. So, you so, know what? That's a good Ian. question of the day. Who's Ooh. the great person behind you? Who makes you who you are? That was a great question. Especially tell them with the family tell comments. Tell about Logan. Oh, I have uh, a ten-week-old son. It'll be ten weeks on uh, on uh, Wednesday. I, I we can give you pictures, Mon. <laughs> <laughs> he's getting pumped for the no, baby. He's a he's, dad already. No, it's great. It's really a truly inspiring thing. I strongly advocate parenthood. You know, the giving. You know, making sure your economics are all in line and everything like that. But it's uh, it's a truly he's a parenthood wonderful advocate, thing. Bob. It's it's awesome. Mon's shaking his head, but. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he's a dream come Is he going to be a wine connoisseur? 
we 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 got that wine baby sommelier book that yes, Matt Mock yes, gave me. Yes. I took that home and nice. we've been reading it. We put a little wine under his Congratulations nose. Congratulations to you, Lisa. Thank you. Cheers. You, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world.